In this video, I'm a, a very soggy Baxenden car breakers in Lancashire. And yes, that is a Ford Corsair. Let's have a look around what they've got here, because believe me, it's fascinating. So here's one that isn't for braking. This is my own Reliant Fox that I've driven here in. Uh, we're on our way back to Wales with a weather warning and storms, it's great. And a Gilburn Invader Mark III is one of the cars they've got here. Now this is one they're hoping to restore and then sell when it's in better condition. But uh, Gilburn Invader, Welsh built of course, uh, Ford Essex V6 engine. They're um, great cars actually, I do like them a lot. But uh, we'll go and have a peruse around the yard. Let's take in this um, Corsair over here. It is very, very poor condition. It has been dragged out of a field, genuine field find, yo. And uh, yeah, very, very sad. It almost broke in half when they um, bought it in, apparently. Yeah, very sad. Ford Corsair was like a bigger Cortina, initially available with V4 engines, later using uh, two litre, was it the Pintos they put in these? So I don't know what engine this one's got, but they are actually hoping to get this one running. I think that has got the V4 in it. So uh, yeah, we'll see if they manage that. They have a YouTube channel, you might see it on there. Uh, here's a Ford Sierra, but it's being stripped for spares. Everything is coming off, it's fairly early Sierra. It's very, very crispy, very crispy indeed. It's got a, yeah, it's got a tax disc for 2005. I think it's sat in the sea since then. Oh, sorry, which model is it? It's a 4 v 4 XR4i, which is rare. Oh, wow, the five-door XR4. Yeah, it's a five-door XR4i. That's the engine outside. Yeah. And it's got disc brakes all around, and it's the rare model. Blimey. That's a shame, isn't it? Because it looks like it was on the road, what, 2005? Yeah. Well, that is a, that patination is beautiful but also depressing. <laughs> but hey, every bit will be used, so that's good. And the four series of E4 1750. Okay. Right yeah. Uh, we've only just got that in. And then we've got the Granada, which I'm going to try and get running, which is a two litre twin cam. Oh, okay, so two litre Scorpio. Okay. Really good. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got another midget coming in, which we're doing as well. Yeah. Uh, we've got a Scimitar GTE coming in. Oh, wow. As well. Yeah. And we have 30 shells, I don't know if he's told you, up there of different vehicles. Yeah, it? we're heading up the back. There are some old cars here we're going to go and explore. Let's have a look at. Yeah, super. So, on the old stuff, yeah. And as you know, you've got the Gulban, he's got yeah. the uh, Alpha Junior. Oh, yeah, let's go and have a look at the Alpha Junior. That's next door. Thank you. See you in a bit. Also got modern stuff here. This Tesla has taken some big damage and uh, is being broken for spares. Uh, they've got someone who likes the motors and batteries out of these. Just not get squished by the truck here. He's just changing the containers over. They don't bail their own cars here, so don't worry. No more upsetting bailing scenes, but they do squish them, put them in these skips and then send them off. But yeah, here's the Alfa Romeo. It's a Junior, uh, G GTV Junior. It's got the 1.3 twin cam. It's got some epic filler work on it. And that's another one they're hoping to restore. A long way still to go on that one. I'm kind of fascinated by these um, uh, these uh, skip trucks where they sort of hook these things up. But there's quite a few cars have been squished into the back of that to be taken away today. Oh, and look at that double wheel steering as well, all the good times. So this is another Tesla that's been fully stripped. Someone's even had the entire sill out of this one. Uh, there we go, there goes the skid. They'll be whisked off to a bailing machine, but we're not filming that, so it's okay. But uh, uh, I think James up there is gonna start loading the uh, baler up. That is a Suzuki Vitara at the top of the pile there. That's a bit sad to see, but they do rust, sadly. So, uh, yeah, all sorts of bits of car getting um, weighed in to the big skip. Oh, actually, while we're here, here's a car being stripped for spares, uh, Vauxhall Corsa, everything's coming off. Uh, bits tend to go to the back then, and they get um, catalogued, given a barcode, 
and go on their eBay shop where you can find 45,000 parts that they've got listed on eBay. It's an awful lot. No wonder they have a barcode system. Uh, this is a Mark III facelift, Granada or Scorpio. Only the top models were called Scorpio in the UK. Uh, the rest were Granadas, but they do have a headlamp wiper moment for us, uh, as do P38 Range Rovers when they have headlamps. Uh, there's a somewhat dubiously modified Subaru Impreza up the back there. I've got to think how much rot and wob is in that. And here's another car that might come for sale at some point. It's a Peugeot 205, trying to look like a rally, but it's just a diesel. But that has literally just come in and uh, an elderly gentleman who decided it was a project too far but it's, it seems solid i've not had too much of a look around but the floors look good that's some welding on the back of the sill runs and drives so hopefully that'll be something they can do up as well uh, let's carry on walking around fairly modern stuff in this section but you know loads of parts bumpers bonnets front ends and some uh, much older doors there what are they off cortina or corsair maybe Hmm, try and identify the bits. And uh, we keep going around. Sadly, there's an AX here. It's an Alation Special Edition. Uh, so that's a bit sad to see here, but sadly they do corrode, um, but getting collectible now. So if you need any AX bits, these are the guys to hit up. Fit Multipler over there, bringing back some dubious bad memories. Um, that one is um, a facelift though, and a W124 Mercedes. That's had quite the smash in the um, windscreen department. No headlamp wipers. And over here is an interesting project. They, they rolled out. This is um, a Ford Sierra Sapphire. Um, but they appear to be putting a Duratec um, turbocharged engine in it. So that's going to be quite exciting when it gets finished. Uh, I wonder if you could cram a five cylinder in these. That would be rather exciting, don't you think? I think I'd like to see that. Um, but let's go and see what has been chucked in the uh, old baler. But yeah, don't some of these cars seem awfully, awfully new? 55 plate, isn't that like brand new? Uh, but yeah, nonetheless, here it is, Volvo S60. One of the most beautiful saloons ever made, I think. Uh, over the back there is the depollution yard. Uh, that's where the cars are drained, like we saw in my Tanner Gross car dismantlers video. So to so Prius awaiting its turn. They've got all the um, catch cans to catch all the oil fuel depollution system there at the back. Honk honk. And uh, yeah, lots of engines that have come out. Again, all no doubt listed on the website. Funky little Komatsu uh, forklift. Works quite hard for its living, I suspect. Um, but uh, yeah, let's go and have a look up the back where the really interesting stuff is. Oh, he's a he's long reach on the old Atlas there. It's another Atlas crane. Uh, this one also looks fairly old. There's a flying Ford Focus. About to get squished, engine already removed. I think they just do it the old fashioned way here and take the engines out uh, manually by hand. And that one's going into the bailer. That's a Mark I Focus. I'm gonna run past, oh! I'm gonna run past while he's doing that because I can't bear to see that Vitara get chucked in there. I'm going to see what's up this way. You have to excuse the poor light, but this is one of their storage units. So what have we got here? Uh, that is a rear light for a set Toledo. Uh, so it's got the QR code on it, so they can scan it. The system will tell them where it's located, no doubt. But yeah, all manner of bits and pieces. Why are even? I don't even know what these bits are. Um, seals and gas struts and all sorts headlamps over here I think or is it dashboard binnacles it might be binnacles uh, what have we got there ECU kit for a Honda Jazz Mark 1 well there you go everything wrapped up uh, we've got drive shafts over this side and uh, yeah QR codes on display everywhere so that's how they find the stuff again because yeah it's all well and good having the bits and breaking the cars but if you can't find the bits that's not a lot of use so the um as we make our way up here we start seeing more and more old bits uh i'm trying to work out what well, that's the roof off 
two-door Corsair maybe, you seem to get a lot of Corsairs here. Morris Minor bonnet, uh, loads of bits and pieces, loads of Morris Minor doors. Cortina or Corsair doors, I think, again, Sierra. Um, tailgate for a, an estate, a 2.3 diesel, the old Indonor or Peugeot diesel engine. Um, some um, doors there for an MG Midget, I think. We've got the back end of a Ford Console Classic up the top there. Uh, loads of useful metal. I, could, I should take these home and make shelves. I'm not sure how Foxanne would feel about that. Um, talking of Reliance, is that a Reliant Rialto? I think it is. I think that's a Rialto body shell. Uh, so if anyone needs a bit of Rialto, there you go. There's your opportunity. Let's go and see what else is up here. This is like the forgotten area. This isn't the busiest part of the yard, but uh, there should be some delights to find. Look at all these old wings. I don't know what those wings are off actually. Oh, they are Morris Minor, I think. An earlier Morris Minor, but someone's added these indicator bubbles to. How's that hatch back off there? Uh, MGB, I think, tailgate. That was Rover P6. Uh, doors in tobacco leaf, I think. That Hillman Minx door over there, I can just see. Oh, wow. So much stuff. Sections of car cut out. If anyone wants a really bad repair section of whatever that is. More Morris Minor wings. Uh, standard 10, I think those are. Or could they be Morris Isis uh, or Cowley, Oxford? All them. Yeah, maybe they're Morris instead. Uh, Volkswagen Beetle front wing there. Oh my gosh, someone would pay a fortune for those rat look doors. Look at the patination on those. And uh, now we've got to go snooping around in here. I can see a Mark II Cortina body shell over there, a Saab 96 V4. I don't even know what that is up the back there. Uh, looks like it might be a Stimson of some sort. Let's go and explore. We're going to work our way around this massive dump truck, complete with swimming pool. Let's see what we can find. Well, there's a caravan, so Miss Hubnut will be happy. Let's see if we can make our way over there. This is proper exploration. They said, oh, you'll love our yard. So be careful walking around it. I've got my brand new boots on, so we're all good. Yeah, Saab 96, they sadly do know how to rot. And yeah, I think that is a Stimson. Um, Paul, who I know, who has quite a few of them, is probably screaming that it isn't. But that's what I reckon it is. Uh, they built all sorts of um, buggies and stuff. I thought this was going to be mini based, but I don't think it is. Looking at it. I'm not sure what it is based on. If I'm entirely honest, but uh, I hope someone had fun with it before it got absolutely destroyed. Um, I'm thinking Walsley on that one. No, I've worked out what this is. This is a Sunbeam Talbot, uh, probably a 90. Uh, they were beautiful cars. They had sort of rear windows that sort of overlapped. There's a little quarter light in the back there. Uh, that, that one is very sad. I don't think that's got much to yield, sadly. Uh, Morris Minor, a Land Crab, G Reds Land Crab, so that's about 1968. So that's quite nice. Another Ford Corsair. What is it with Ford Corsairs here? Just trip over a caravan. And uh, yeah, it's um, well, bedlam. Morris Miners everywhere, but not just Morris Miners. Um, I think I can see a K Reg Sierra. Yeah, that, I mean, Morris Miners on the mainstay, aren't they? Wow. Uh, it's just a Roots Group car there. It might be a Hillman Minx. It's a bit jazzy for a Minx, but uh, that's quite funky. Austin A35 there. Yeah, that is a K Rage Sierra. I'm just not sure how to navigate my way around this sea of cars. The Morris Minor, uh, was it a Traveller? I think it might have been a Traveller at the back there with the wood painted black. 
and uh, I can see something with a T-top. I think it might be a Toyota MR2 and then a, an Iveco Daily because that's what they do. Yeah, what an amazing place. If you were restoring one, you said, I would like a chunk of rear wing or a rear wheel arch. They look quite decent out of that car. I'm pretty sure they would chop it out for you. They're very, very busy, but they're lovely lads. And they've got a great thing going on here. Woohoo! So I've managed to clamber through to the other side. I've had to leave the umbrella behind for another mouldy caravan. Morris miners are plenty. I think this would have been a split screen one. So it's probably a series two. Now we've got a side valve Ford here. I think it's a side valve. It's a four door, so I think that makes it a prefect. The two doors were Anglias and uh, the prefect could be had with a side valve engine or later with the Anglia 105e overhead valve engine. They are a lovely car to drive. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is a Moggy Traveller, but has seen better days. And then we've got this Saab 900 here, the four door saloon version. Uh, another Morris Minor, still with windscreen. Uh, an MG Midget, I think that would be a rubber bumper one, fairly late in that rather lurid colour. And yeah, Toyota MR2 Mark 1. Still got its windscreen wipers. Here's the detail you don't see because it's usually the bonnet covering them up. But they've got the full windscreen wipers going on. Is it still attached? Yeah, it might still be attached actually. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's gone very badly, I suspect. Strangely, look, it's still got floors and sills. I wonder if something happened to the front end of this car. It's obviously had an impact there at some point, but uh, yeah, sad to see. And then the uh, Iveco Daily, that's what dailies do. But yeah, it's fascinating up here, isn't it? Look, still a rear light on this miner here. So that's uh, post um, about 64, I think. Uh, I bet Steph I drive a classic shouting at her screen now because uh, she knows miners better than I do. Um, how do I get back out? Uh, we go this way. This is where I came in, but I managed to forget to press the record button. So that was skillful of me because we have a Reliant Robin chassis here. Uh, I guess it could be that Rialto. Does it look like it's galvanized? It, mm, I'm not convinced. But Reliant had a real issue on the Mark I Robins where uh, this steering box mount would break off. And then of course, the um, steering stops working, which is less than ideal. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a Reliant Robin or Regal. No, uh, not Regal. Rialto, because it's got uh, 10 inch wheels. Uh, the Regal used 12 inches. So it could be the chassis. And that does look galvanized, I think. So it could be, but that's the chassis from that Rialto. But uh, yeah, not in very good state. Unfortunately, there is a better Reliant here today. I think these wings might have been cut out of um, one of the body shells over there. I think that's Singer Gazelle, that Roots car. I think that's what those are. Um, these 105e Anglia, do we think? Got a pair of doors there. Uh, I could be wrong on that. It's fun this, isn't it? Guess the car. Uh, a Min U, uh, famous car. TR7, door there, very distinctive. Pair of doors and the bonnet. Needing some work, but nonetheless, they're there. And uh, what's that off? Austin 1100? Two door, maybe? Fascinating. So here's a Jaguar that's just about to be crushed by the Atlas. No, only joking, not everything comes here to die. Uh, this came in because it needed a ton of work. It's an XKR um, Jaguar, but it's the uh, 100, so it's... Um, the supercharged one and uh, the most exciting thing is that he's left it running which means I can operate the windscreen wipers and ascertain whether there's a triangle of doom there is no triangle of doom uh, so there you go so th this one is likely to be available uh, cruise control is not available driver's door is open bonnet is open uh, fail safe engine mode Incorrect part fitted, so it's um, having a merry old time with its various message messages, but uh, it is a very rare car. I think he was saying there's something like 120, 125 of these built to this spec, right hand drive um, XKR100. 
Uh, I confess I don't know a fat lot about them, uh, other than they have a supercharger and go very, very fast. Uh, still got a good old um, um, rotary style throttle though. So yeah, there you go. If you'd like one of these, then uh, yeah, speak to James at Baxenden Car Breakers. And this is available. I don't think he wants to sell it to be honest. I think he's using it to drive around and I think he rather likes it. But uh, something a bit different. But I think that's probably going to conclude our visit here. Very, very interesting place. And like I say, they've got so many parts uh, listed on eBay. They've got their own YouTube channel. They will be trying to start cars. I'm not sure how much look they're going to have with a Corsair, but I'm pleased they're going to have a go. They reckon they've got more chance with the Scorpio. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to head to the Hubnut store should you like to buy nice items. And I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Mmm.